Well, it's Scott Shepard of Lake Area Technical Institute, Watertown, South Dakota, again. This time to give you a very quick demonstration of how to um, take three photos and turn them into a panorama. Now, all of this is based on an assumption that you understand how to perform the appropriate kind of camera work in order to get um, pictures that are going to be uh, good for stitching together into a panorama. This tutorial is not going to deal with that. Talk to your teacher if he or she hasn't already told you how to do this. But I have three photos of uh, a distant Los Angeles um, taken from the Getty Center in um, Los Angeles or just north of Los Angeles, just off I-5. And uh, these photos have all been adjusted a little bit. Uh, it's really important that all of the photos are exactly the same size so that if you've cropped um, any of the photos that you've taken, uh, make sure that they're cropped to exactly the same size. These are all uh, 1800 by 1200, 300 dpi images and they're numbered one, two, and three. And so they go in sequence from my left, center, and right. Okay. Now, these pictures will not be round trip from Aperture. I just wanted to show you that these are originally in Aperture. I've exported them as um, full resolution files. I'm not sure that they're Photoshop or JPEG files. And now I'm going to go to Photoshop. And instead of round tripping, which I like to do, but you, I can't, I haven't found a way to do this with Aperture. Um, what we need to do is go up to File, Automate, and way at the bottom of this menu is Photo Merge. And I'm going to click on that. And it gives me this dialog. And in particular, what we want to do is browse to the place on our computer where these files reside. It's good to have them in a folder. You could open them individually if you wanted to, but uh, it's very user-friendly if they're on a folder. And by the way, there's nothing secret about three files. You could have 10, you could have 20. I was reading an article about an aerial photographer who um, used 48 high-resolution photos to um, create a campus picture, um, aerial campus picture. So anyway, I think I forgot to check something here. I want to make sure that we click the drop-down uh, choice that says Use Folder. Now we go to Browse and find the folder and click on Open. And there they are. Now I'm going to click OK and it will go to work um, making this panorama. It takes some time to do this, and especially if these are large photos. So I'm probably going to compress um, the time by editing out the time when I'm sitting here watching the computer and nothing seems to be happening. So here goes. Actually, that was amazingly fast. I don't know why it happened so fast. Uh, now, I want you to see that it's taken all three of these photos and stitched them, stitched them together. And even though I've been very careful in terms of how I've panned the camera, um, it ends up giving me something like this that requires uh, cropping. Um, I've also noticed that I'm seeing a little bit of shading where the pictures were layered on top of each other. And speaking of layers, I want you to go over to the Layers palette and notice that there are three layers here representing each of the pictures. And if we turn a layer off and on, we can see how the software uh, kind of tears the image so that it can mesh with the next image. I don't know how to explain that, but it's actually pretty cool uh, if you ask me in terms of how it does this. I don't know what it looks for when it makes the choices on where to uh, merge the files, but it does a pretty amazing job. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the Crop Tool. Um, I know that the uh, ProLab that I send my pictures to have a 5 by 30 preset, and I don't have one here that I can see real quickly. And so I'm going to create one. We'll call this 30 for the width. That's inches. 5 for the height. And resolution is 300 dpi. We're going to save that as a crop preset. Um, I'm going to call it just panorama. Panorama. 
um, 5 by 30. Click OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop the best part of this picture. Um, catch is to keep that ratio, I'm going to have to sacrifice some of the uh, stuff that's at the top and the bottom. I'm going to actually try to um, put the top rule of thirds line as close to the horizon as I can. Now, by the way, I can drag that or I can use the uh, little arrow keys in the bottom right hand corner of my keyboard and nudge this. Um, and I think that's a keeper. Hit enter. And there's the panorama. Now, I could save this as a layered Photoshop file, but I don't really have a reason to do that. Uh, ultimately, this is going to be sent off or could be sent off to a printer. And so what I want to do is I want to um, um, collapse the layers. I do that by going up to the Layer menu and Flatten. And I just compress them all. If you look at the Layers uh, menu or the palette over here, you'll notice that it's now just the background. And um, then I'm going to do a Save As. And I'm going to save it as LA Panorama uh, as a JPEG. Quality of 10. I didn't notice where that was being saved, but I'm thinking it might be in the same folder where the original three photos were. And anyway, that's how you create a panorama using the Automate Photo Merge tool in Photoshop CS6. Very cool. Thanks for listening. Hope this helps.